up, everybody, and welcome back to Red Dead Town, episode uh, eight, movie eight of Garden of Sinners. Um, so it's been a minute. It's been a little bit of a minute. Let me just boom. Uh, this is comments. I don't really have too much to say. The most important thing I wanted to point to was this little figure right here. Now you may be like, "Yo, why are you highlighting the date of the last uh, episode?" Um, you may notice it's been about a month and a half. What? It's July first now. What was before July? June. And this was on May fifteenth. So yeah, but it's been about a month and a half. Um. The reason I'm focusing on this is twofold. One, appreciate y'all for being patient. I do appreciate y'all. Y'all my beautiful little Garden of Sinners fans, and I appreciate y'all for that. But even more, um, I think it's like, so the reason I wasn't making videos, I've talked about this in a, in a few other videos, but the reason I kind of took a pause from YouTube, because I took a pretty strong pause, um, and kind of like content slowed down, wasn't great, um, on, it was like a lot of like nihilism type beats, right? And you might be like, why are you bringing this up? It's because on like literally while I was in like a state where I didn't want to make anything and like nothing felt like anything had meaning, in, meaning anymore, I was like, oh, this is what Soren was like. This is this is why movie like four or five happened. What, which one was it? Four or five. This is what, this movie five is making even more sense right now. Um, and which then turns around and makes like I even thought of Enjo my goat. When I was feeling really bad, I was like, dang, what would Enjo do right now? It doesn't matter. But, like, it's funny that this show, like, kind of came to me then, right? Because it really, a lot of, like, at, that's why I love Movie 5 so much. Movie 5 was a lot about fighting back against, like, nihilism. And for Soren, it was making meaning through, like, cataloging and remembering, right? And so... I kind of have like a new res like an even newer respect for the lad because despite all the like horrors of everything going on, at least he was trying to make things happen, right? He was trying to give meaning to a world that can so often feel meaningless. So that just I don't know, it kind of cooked with me. Like I feel like I got a little bit of a Garden of Sinners buff when I was uh when I was uh not feeling great, you know. Um and I've since come around on it a bit more. I still don't know if I can um, like I don't know, nihilism's kind of really OP thoughts. It's actually really OP. I think it's, I don't know if I can uh, rationally ever conquer nihilism, but that's why we emotionally conquer nihilism and why we do uh, F it we ball, shout out Enjo for that. Just be like, it doesn't matter, I was here, right? You don't even give yourself the time to get existential and fall into dread because I was here and I got a mission to do. I gotta go, sh I gotta give Shiki this samurai sword real quick, you know? Yeah. So I just thought that was kind of relevant um, and kind of funny. So count it as half an excuse for why it took me a month and a half to get to the epilogue. But also, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, okay. Um, I only really wanted to... Oh, to so respond to like... Um, I thought this was a really good thing to me for to just bring up that I'm now aware of. That it's kind of crazy because I didn't really notice this. I didn't put this together. That Shiki didn't kill the people in movie 2 because it was Leo. A.K.A. Beast Boy, freaking Lion Man at the end of... At, in this movie, the main villain of movie 7. Um... And so that's just crazy. I mean, and that completely recontext that makes it it's crazy because I always have been like, Mikio, you're crazy, Mikio, you're crazy, you're delusional. The bro was kinda right. Like you gotta put some respect on his name for that, you know? Um and then this was a really this was a really good point as well about how that had kinda happened, all right? So that's that's really interesting. And it, it really plays with that like um because I was fully convinced she had done it the entire time, right? Um, and it re so it really plays with like your perception and like the the chronological eventing of the story really is crazy in that way So that was pretty sick. Um, and this comment's just sweet So I'm gonna hit it with a, a, a heart real quick and then check out Garden of Sinners I don't know what this is in the extra chorus episodes after the epilogue 2 I'm gonna ask the discord about that as soon as I finish um, uh, um, Watching this new one because in my files I only have up to the epilogue so we will be we will be watching the epilogue and then I will um, head up the uh, the Discord shout out the Discord join the description for the rest of that. But yeah, honestly, let me like I don't think I really need to scroll. I don't really like it's an epilogue, right? Oh, this is movie five. It's an epilogue, right? So I kind of assume it's gonna be like an extension of the after credit scene that we watched. Um, so the important things to remember is Mika has down an eye. Got st I think it just got stabbed out, right? Um. Which, you know, was... I thought he died. Oh, yeah, I forgot they... I forgot he started making out with him. Oh, yeah. Bro really was consuming... Like, this was crazy. It was to give him the, the like, the stamp thing. Like, the drug stamp. Right? But, yeah, dude, I thought he was dead dead when they... Right here, I think it is. This, this freaked me out, man. Right here? Oh, my goodness. 
Ah, it's horrible, bro. You can see it cleaving into him, bro. Yeah, so that was just insane. That was just absolutely insane. So he's got that scar. Um, Shiki is now a murderer because she killed Leo. They haven't kissed yet, so I'm kind of hoping maybe we can get our get the smooch because they're really teasing us with the smooch here. And I definitely, I, I've really grown to like Shiki a lot more. I, I really like Shiki nowadays, so I want to see her happy with her boy Mikia. Um, you know, on this side of the of the fence, on this side of the world, right? So this was really really sweet. I assume we're just gonna get like an extension of that. I've accepted my current self and my previous self, and now I'll live my life. Yeah, let's get a little taste of that. I mean, this was kind of a perfect ending, so I'm kind of right, like a we've i've set i've accepted this and now we live that's a really nice open and open-ended ending so I'm, I'm very curious what they're, they're going to do here for this epilogue but hey the only way to to check it out is to check it out right so this is a nice 33 minuter let's jump into it i think without further ado so get yourself a drink get yourself a snack appreciate y'all for um watching this fun little show i'm gonna take some of my water real quick mmm really doesn't get better than just straight water huh just kidding dr pepper exists anyways epilogue and maybe the two things afterwards um in a in a in a future episode but hey appreciate y'all let's jump to this epilogue in a three a two a one bang shout out aniplex oh wait i mean oof i forget who's i forget which one of them um uh claimed me copyright claimed me okay subtitles are on not muted what they about to do I forgot how good the music is. I just remembered. They kind of cook with the music in this show, bro. Ooh. Golden snow. But not like piss. Like beautiful. Dang, that's my boy right there. He's really growing out that other side to cover up his eye. Oh, it's like a repeat, man. It's a parallel. I don't think I've seen her in that dress before. In that uh, like kimono or whatever. Oh, he's dragging his leg. <laughs> Dang, the lighting on her looks real good. Dude, the snow trail. She did sound weird, I was wondering. I'm out. Okay. Let me just... Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> okay. Thank goodness. I'm supposed to be confused. Because she sounded so different. I'm merely the one who exists inside the empty... Okay. This show already... It's already getting crazy, y'all. I am the empty soul. The container that yin and yang spins within. Like alienated from itself? 
or just alienated in, in total? Whoa, crazy line. Okay. Bro, Mikia rolls with this. That's my boy. So it's like... It, it really makes me think of like... Dissociative Identity Disorder. So she's like... She had like the two altars or whatever. But then she's like the core one that they spawned out of to protect her. That neither of them can perceive. Oh. Okay. To like let him know that all of Shiki. Yeah, she loves him. Dude, this is crazy. I thought we were going to have a chill epilogue. Some Huggin Dons. Give me some Huggin Dons strawberry. Oh, okay. Oh? <laughs> Personality is actually one's intelligence? Okay. Uh, I can kind of understand that, yeah. Yeah, there's like two... Intelligence can mean two words, like the animating... Sp yeah, the animating thing. Okay. She's making a uh, soul... Soul-brain distinction. Soul-mind distinction right now, I think. Wait. I think. Oh my god. <gasps> I thought that music was in real life, and I was like, there's an alert going off, and I'm gonna die. Sorry. There was a mage created world he said the same thing that music freaked me out <laughs> so human mind is pure is intelligence plus soul is that what you're saying thing you're not shiki apparently dude i can't even think about this stuff it gives me too much crises I like that. I do like that idea. That's a cool idea. <laughs> okay. Formed along with the body.
Hmm. Then what makes self-reflection? Like, it's not a matter of, okay. Sure. What's its purpose? Mind, body, soul? Yeah, mind, body, soul. Psyche being mind. Yeah, yeah, mind, body, soul. I'm good with that. Psyche comes from the brain and the soul comes from the physical body. I don't think I followed that 100% the ending, but... I'm a personality derived from my body itself. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's kind of what I meant, where it's like she has the two alters and then like the, the other her. So this is the, the other her, or like the original. But both were inside Shiki Ryogi, which is her. Right? Yeah. Ooh, origin's a big word. The Alpha and the Omega. Heard. Okay. <laughs> That's, very... That's funny. That's real, bro. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah, I feel that, brother. That's me right now. I like this, this cheeky. But you've shown it to me. <laughs> to reach the root. Okay, they tried to insert personalities. Okay. Okay. I'm like very, lo I'm like loosely following. Yin and Yang. Yeah, the um, affirm and deny, right? That she was saying earlier. Ooh, wow, that was a line. The misfortune of myself. You didn't have that budding intelligence. Right, because you didn't have it, but then it was infused within you, right? Was the emptiness like filled? Wow. But Hmm 
There's the bot. Okay, rather than instill me. Okay, they awakened you. And then you created the two identities. Yeah, and then this is you deciding to make the personalities, yeah. Because it was too much of a hassle. Because you're nothingness. So the thingness of the world would be really strange. Or predictable, I guess. Oh, okay. That's different. That's a line. Oh, it gets in. Oh, and it gets in the way. Oh, I like that. I like that. So you have the one in the, his physical body and then intelligence and then intelligence makes a new one and then the original one fades away because the intelligence one has taken over. That's pretty real. I think I like actually like that. Yeah. And that's like the ego, bro. That's like the ego. If I would try to say that's the ego. Mm. Please spell it out for me. You didn't spell it out for me. Oh my goodness, please. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I was going to bring that up earlier. So I'm glad they did. You need some level of intelligence to like communicate. It's not like you get prepackaged intelligent or like, you know, words in your physical body. A container, yeah. I like that analogy. Is the origin what is the origin then if you're connected to it and you're an empty box is the origin an empty box i mean that or to like well your origin but like the origin whoa because it's a scary thought because i connected to the root is kind of how i put it right Ooh, ooh. To be of service to another person gives like the empty box a little bit of meaning. That's pretty that's pretty nice. <laughs> That's honest. But it's like love, bro. It's like love and relationships are like the, the thing that gives a tiny bit of meaning. That's pretty lit. Hmm. She's looking in, and that's what capital Shiki fell into, right? <laughs> so that's what leads to like the root, right? Maybe not. Spiral of origin. I was about to say the night sky is such a good metaphor. Yeah. I love it when we're thinking the same thing, Shiki. And the snow in it is like such a cool visual 
to mix in with that metaphor because it gives it a little bit of shape and movement. Microcosm. Dude. Oh, Shiki, yo. I mean, Soren did want you. The key to the door. Because it all swirls around. Show me, show me you doing it. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's a bit, that's a bit much. Ooh. Shiki, what are you yammering about? Okay. I like that. The emptiness dreams of nothing. Was she dreaming of you? Yeah. funny because they're she keeps telling this to mikia and there's a reason that they're doing this that they're stepping out into the outside world but there's a reason like you've opened your eyes and stepped out right so it's you know So it's like peaceful. You won't even notice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you won't even notice. But you make me happy. Like, despite all of that, he does make her happy. And her being able to do something for him gave her like an iota of meaning oh she's truly kind still she's still truly kind
the snow hit different now. Bro, Mikia looks so good with the with the hair. Don't tell Shiki. Aw. Are they swapping? His eye, the scar. Dude, this, this shot is crazy. That animation was nuts. But just enjoying it, yeah. Oh, good line. That was a good line. That's super true. Yeah, yeah. It's like anti-ambition. Special to seek to be ordinary. Oof. Or like to, yeah, to seek to be ordinary. But it's like non-seeking is what makes it so ordinary, right? So it's almost a little bit of a contradiction in and of itself. Ooh, ooh. We live to turn the gaps between us when we don't see eye to eye into boundaries of emptiness. This background music is so good. I think she just swapped. Not yet. It's like nothing, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, no wonder she's feels attachment towards him. Oh.
some coming. Is it just the wind? It's just the wind. The umbrella. <laughs> She's gone. Holy crap, what an epilogue. Like, dude, I'm not... I, I thought we were just gonna, like, hang out and, like, I don't know, be, like, romantic and stuff. Not, like, hit me with the craziest philosophical, like, self-nothingness monologue I've ever heard. It's literally rolling credits. Like, dude, how long was... Oh, okay, that was 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't think I took a breath. I literally don't think I took a breath. This show just is so, like, it, it kind of feels like reading, like, a philosophical manuscript. In, in a good way. In a good way. It's just, it's very rich in that department. Like, where everything they say, I'm like, I feel like I gotta reread everything they say, man. Like, dude... It's just, I think what's most interesting is how, so her origin is nothingness, and then that is connected to the spiral of origin, which I kind of take as part of the whole root thing. So that to me is like the core of the like existence kind of, right? It's kind of the, the impression I got of it from like Soren and all that. Um, like that, which all stems from, right? And so, for nothingness to be the core, or to at least be connected to the core, is, like, a really interesting premise. Um, because then it, like, like, something that's always looking inward, that is, like, void incarnate, and it was made incarnate by the Ryogi family, um, like... If that's the closest thing to that which things stem from, then what does that even mean for that which stems? Does that make any sense? It's like, it's like so close to a, um, well, let's see if there's something here. Oh, the umbrella. <laughs> Wow, yeah, and that's just it. It's like, I mean, honestly, the night sky is like a perfect analogy with the snow. It really, like, like, I kept thinking, like, night sky, void, emptiness, and then the snow is drifting through, which is this, like, ephemeral, temporary thing that will land and melt and disappear, and then there will only be the void behind it again. So there's, like, this backdrop of emptiness perhaps at the like the core of everything but there's still snow that's kind of moving through it temporarily and so it like i think what i'm really interested in is oh geez now i have to remember like purpose i think the word was let me try to find it there's a couple things i'm really interested in or maybe it wasn't purpose Did meaning maybe it was meaning Right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah, so, context, a container that can only gaze inwardly on a path toward death. The mages said I was connected to the origin, but that meant absolutely nothing to me. But just now, I felt there might be a tiny bit of meaning. 
because it would be nothing for me to heal this wound of yours because I could help someone in need and be involved in the outside world. And yet there's nothing you desire. And, and so like that to me is like what the snow is, if that makes sense, where it's like that fleeting little tiny bit of meaning that just seems to slip in and out and then hits the ground and melts and disappears. Right. That's, that's kind of the impression that like the night sky with this, the night sky with the snow does for me. Um, and it's like, like I had a very strong, there's like a, there's a very strong mental image that is like, though, man, they were talking so much about Mikia being like alone at the end, which I, because of his, like him as his mind, um, if that's all true, then she's not the one who's actually all alone, right? So he's the one that's actually all alone, right? Um, but he's also the crystallization of blissful days. So it's kind of also a good thing either way though. It's like, I, I get this like impression of like two people in the void, like embraced. That's what it feels like to me. Cause it's like, they don't even, even this being that is what's the, like, what's the word they use for the origin? Uh, origin nothingness nothingness is the word even for this being that's like origin is nothingness to be connected to mikia and to be able to even do something for mikia in the outside world despite the core being this empty nothingness gives a little bit of meaning and that that's the biggest point to me like that's this is probably the best or best is a big word this is probably the most important line of the epilogue for me right because it, it's to say that even that that being of nothingness itself that is connected to the root of all existence, I think, can feel just a tiny bit of meaning. And then the avenue in which they feel it is like connection to others, right? And helping someone else. But it's it's a relational, it's relational to another person, right? And it's funny that this Shiki herself or itself is also like kind of a right a relational thing she was kind of described or it i don't know i'm kind of trying to use it because there's like female shiki and male shiki so this kind of feels like a like a separate shiki altogether um but it kind of is like a relational between the other two shikis right capital shiki and lowercase shiki um though it's more of a container than anything else i would say Right? I'm not the personality that my brain dreamed up. Rather, I'm a personality derived from my body itself. Bro, it reminds me of... <laughs> it reminds me of a chapter in Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Okay? You know what I mean, chat? We're just gonna... Let me just real quick. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, Despisers of the Body. It's page 61. Let me just hit you with a quote real quick. Because it really does feel like this. Like, it, like this kind of energy... Um, this is the Penguin Classics one. Um, da -da 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 You say I, and you are proud of this word, but greater than this, although you will not believe in it, is your body and its great intelligence, intelligence, which does not say I, but performs I. Uh, and then jumping ahead. Sense and spirit are instruments and toys. Behind them still lies the self. The self seeks with the eyes of the sense. It listens to with the ears of the spirit. The self is always listening and seeking. It compares, subdues, conquers, destroys. It rules and is also the ego's ruler. Behind your thoughts and feelings, my brother, stands a mighty commander, an unknown sage. He is called self. He lives in your body. He is your body. And so it's like, and for, and it's kind of used in Thus Spark Zarathustra, that idea of like, then don't despise your body because your body is, is like yourself right he is he lives in your body he is your body there's more reason in your body than in your best wisdom right so that of the body there is more reason than your best wisdom which is a prioritization of like the body versus like the intelligence to use the the, the show's terms right so i'm a personality derived from my body itself i was just thinking like oh you're the self that in you're the self written that i've read because i really like this chapter um like yourself laughs at your ego and it's proud leapings you, the self says to the ego feel pain thereupon it suffers the self says to the ego feel joy thereupon it rejoices so yeah that, that kind of type energy put that back on my shelf oh i dropped it oh it's horrible anyways um 
but yeah, like that self behind what you would typically think, imagine to be yourself, um, that causes things to happen. And so it felt like that was Shiki where like she caused capital Shiki and lowercase Shiki to emerge, um, because she didn't want to deal with it. So she kind of like made that happen. And then it's also got such a highlight on like the bodily aspect, which is an another parallel. So I was really thinking of that, which was kind of crazy. Though this this carries like a an entire separate element of like like a like a death drive kind of idea or something, right? Where it's like I'm just nothingness. If I were, I, I should have just perished as a perished as a premature baby. Yet I had the misfortune misfortune of acquiring myself. There's like a a return to nothingness, right? That it wishes to, this Shiki wishes to not wish or dream at all so that when the body disintegrates into nothingness, it doesn't even notice that it has disintegrated. It's almost like this, like, enlightened Zen state of nothingness or something, right? But that's just in line with the origin. Um, and so the self as a something is like this negative distraction from this like nothingness of which the origin is right um and so but the question is like is the this distraction a good thing or not that's my my question right though it's kind of a bum question because guess what the idea of good is something that the distraction made up so how would the, how could you judge the distraction by using the tools that the distraction constructed you're kind of hoed right um yeah so, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Every human house is a personality in their physical body, but none of them ever, ever perceives their own self. Yeah, th that kind of energy, right? Behind your thoughts is this separate thing in an unknown sage, but here it's like no one ever perceives that thing behind themselves, behind their, um, that is their self because their intelligence creates a, or is used as a separate self. So the intelligence takes the place of the self that was behind it. I mean, it almost makes me think like, what if like I was never raised to know language? Like I think in the terms of language, you know? So it's like if like language has been implanted on me and I think in language and that kind of like, what would I have been had I not had language? Like the words I, self, I and self are words that I use to define myself, but what would what would this thing be had I no words and no th words to to shape thought, you know? And so, but even this is like even thought itself would probably be housed as intelligence. So like it's kind of the same thing again, um, which would be something even behind that, right? Um, I would probably say something about like like I have the desire to be happy, right? But what is that thing that's doing the desiring? You know what I mean? Because I don't think I, like, I desire to be happy, but why do I desire to be happy? Like, there's something that's causing me to desire to be happy. And that something is, like, the thing behind my me that kind of, like, the puppet master. It kind of gave me that energy a little bit. Um, so it's like the intelligence is this separate thing that tries to pursue the desires, but you know, there's something, dis there's, there's another step that we have jumped past, th uh, through intelligence, something like that. Intelligence born from activity in the brain develops into a personality, which controls the physical body. At that point, the person he has in the physical body loses all purpose. Well, okay. That's it. like, there was purpose to the personality beforehand. Cause with you, there was nothing. The physical, the personality housed in the physical body, which is you is nothingness. So is there purpose in nothingness? I don't know. Or just has been replaced would be a better way to put it. I don't know. Um, and it believes it comes from the intelligence instead. Yeah. I think that's true. I think a lot of people think that. I'm a machine that sits unplugged. And without my Shiki software, I'd be nothing but a box. A container that can only gaze inwardly on a path toward death. And then you are extended. You are extended out by the Ryogi family. Um... Yeah, but, and then this line, it, it hits so hard because of all that, right? Where just now, like, even with, I can only gaze inward on a path towards death, it meant that origin means absolutely nothing to me, 
And yet, I feel there might have been be just a tiny bit of meaning. Oh, oh, it's love, bro. It's love. And he's like, yeah, I don't want you to accidentally disintegrate me, girl. <laughs> um, yeah. And then this recontextualizes her in the hospital, that, that, uh, that movie a lot. Oh my goodness. The sea at night, that brings back memories. If it were the sea just before daybreak, I'd find it a bit heartwarming. Even if it were a sea devoid of all shapes of all people. So that's the nature of your soul, isn't it? Nothingness was your shape. You know what I mean? I myself might be the spiral. A place where all causes swirl, where everything is provided. And that's where there's nothing. That's a terrifying thought. That the spiral might be where there's nothing. And so we're all connected to nothingness. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of the um the quote at the end of the game, the king and pawn go back in the same box. Kind of reminds me of that, where it's like the game ends and we all return to nothing. It all returns to nothing. Just keep tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. It all returns to nothing. You know what I mean? I can restructure the laws of substance in so minute they're imperceptible. But why would I? There's no point. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. But yeah, like, if nothing, that's kind of an interesting point of nothingness. Like, there's like a lot, like, there's a, the impulse towards death, but even trying to bring that about would be like to take an action to try to make nothingness happen you have to participate in somethingness because you're having to take an action which is something so it, it is kind of self-defeating for this nothing origin cheeky to take actions so it makes sense to me that it hasn't up to this point right it would just be the same as dreaming. Yeah, so it's like, it's the same thing as dreaming, and I and the dream is of nothing. How boring can I be? But I can't help it, you know, since I'm nothing but a physical body. Even if it's pointless, I have to go along with her dream. You're along for the ride. It's like this crazy... It's, dude, it's like... Dude. Like, I feel like I'm... To like, I feel like... It's like... It's like she's talking to... The nature of herself. And that's exactly what it is. But the crazy thing is that's how it feels too. And she's not talking with it because the nature of herself is just talking. But like, even if it's pointless, I have to go along with her dream. That's kind of, I feel like that's, that kind of just hit really deep. That makes me think that like, there's a me somewhere in me that would say this exact same thing. Even if it's pointless, I have to go along with his dream. And so like the me that I would usually call myself up in here, which is based off my intelligence, has that dream, has those ambitions, is, if anything, defined by dreams, defined by ambitions, defined by activities, defined by sentiments, defined by relationships, right? But all of that are emergent things of intelligence that forget that original thing, but that original thing is still has to go along with it, even if it's pointless, because to that original thing, it probably is understood as pointless or not understood as having a point which would be equatable to pointlessness, right? Ooh, I like that last line I just spoke. I'm not gonna lie. That kind of hit. As I can only see the inside, I already know of everything that's occurred. Okay. And then the, it's, um, the thing about like, if I, if, if a homicidal maniac, maniac, maniac exists, it's obviously me. The one who longed to kill you, it was none of me. Don't tell Shiki, okay? That's kind of funny. It really, like, really connects a lot of the, like, truly kind soul type business. Um, to live having no characteristics. Yeah, and then, and then Miki has a really interesting... Never wishing for yourself to become special. Dude, the animation was crazy here. Where they just did the zoom onto him and the turnaround and then the zoom onto Shiki, bro. What? They were cooking. They were cooking with that. Um... But then, yeah, Mikia, to live having no characteristics, never wishing for yourself to become special. You never hurt anyone, so you never get hurt yourself. You never steal, so you never gain. No waves, just blend into time and live an average life and quietly draw your last breath. It's I really like this line. Most people don't lead that kind of life because they want it. The result of trying to become special only to fail. That's the shape of a human who lives an ordinary life. Facts. I, it's tragic, bro. 
is tragic. So many people, including your boy, try to be special, fail, and then they're ordinary. One of my greatest fears is to be ordinary. But sadly, I got bad news for myself. Chances are I'm going to be ordinary. And even if I'm not ordinary, I kind of am ordinary. Because, you know what I mean? What? How are we even defining ordinary before? It's just all falling apart. But then we kind of, we kind of get a, a flip on that with, it must be the same for every one of us. The one thing that seems natural art right here. We live to turn the gaps between us when we don't see eye to eye into boundaries of emptiness. Uniqueness that no one will ever understand. Universality that no one ever tries to understand because he's so ordinary. No one will ever really try to understand him. But like uniqueness that no one will ever understand. So it's, that's the opposite of like ordinary, right? Um... Yeah. But is but also but will also never attract anyone. That's not true because you he's attracted Cheeky. But Cheeky's like nothingness, you know? So like the one that's all alone has become has attracted nothingness. That kind of feel right, don't it? That the lonely, which is kind of empty of relationships attracts nothingness, which is the no of thingness. Yeah. Dude, this was a crazy one, bro. For me, a lot of this kind of thought um, leads me into nihilism, personally. Like, pretty hard. Um, yeah. Because it kind of is the point. Uh, this is the only- this is, this is literally the thing I grasped to, this line right here. I accidentally flicked to this because I was just clicking through the subtitle browser. That's really funny. Um, but yeah, like, outside of this, like, if- like- I think that rationality can be very self-defeating, like self-cannibalizing right um because i think a lot of what rationality is is deciphering and like breaking down things right and so you like break down things that don't make sense in order to use those pieces to build something that makes sense right like you have to break down counter arguments to make an argument right but i think the problem of rationality is that I don't think it can, like, I don't know if it will, it can ever stop breaking things down. I think, like, deconstruction, it's like, it's like, de it's literally just the idea of deconstruction, right? Deconstruction, what's the end point? Do you just endlessly deconstruct, you know? And then what, right? Is deconstruct, like, and, and some people are like, like Derrida or whatever. It's like deconstruction is justice type deal. So there is like a point and there is like an onus, but what, like, what if justice gets deconstructed? And for Derrida, you can't do that. And I'm not going to get into all that nonsense because it won't make any sense because I'm, you know, I, I, it takes so much longer to explain any of it in a way that would make any sense. But it's kind of a thing of just like, I think rationality is so, is it can be very deconstructive, but then what happens when the tool is used on itself? When deconstruction attempts to deconstruct deconstruction and then you're left with nothing. Unless you say it's impossible, but then why do you say it's impossible, right? Like, I, I, I can't... It just breaks you down into nothingness, man. I can't believe Shiki is nothingness, bro. Because <laughs> I'm a thing, man. I'm a thing. I'm a living, breathing thing. And so if you start breaking down the idea of living, of, th of thinging, of being, of breathing, of loving, of human activity, and then it just becomes, like... You break apart the meaning ascribed, you you shine a light on that behind the curtain that is that is that is spawning desire, that is spawning activity, right? If you if you realize that the core of your being is looking in at itself into nothing, trying to dream nothing and you're just distracting it, I mean, what do you even do anymore? Like how do you not just die? It's just, a, it's like the death drive again, bro. It's very death drive, bro. The desire to return to nothingness from, from whence you came type beat. That's how it feel. And the only saving grace, the only saving grace is this line right here. This is literally the only saving grace from that deconstructed nothing remains nothingness, which is nihilism. I, I mean, it, to me, it feels like nihilism, right? Because if there is nothing, then there's no meaning because meaning is a thing. So we're hoed, right? And that'd just be nihilism. Um, but so the only fight against that is 
I felt that there might be a just be a tiny bit of meaning. It's crazy because this requires I and this requires felt. So you need an I and you need the ability to feel. But like we were we were just talking about how I and feel and feel like we were just talking about how much the your the intelligence is what's spawning like that um personality or whatever which then is where the eye comes from but i guess for this cheeky here intelligence didn't spawn her because she was that thing beforehand she's tied to the physical body so if the physical body itself can feel meaning then you're probably you're probably good because then there is like a yeah because this physical body can't eat itself in the way that intelligence eats it itself mm, is that true Probably. But could intelligence eat this? Could rationality to destroy this? But it couldn't, right? Because this is behind it. This is which spawns intelligence. So you'd probably be safe. Oh my goodness. It's too much. It's too much. Listen, I... Nihilism beats me every day and it beats me a new booty every single day of my life, okay? Um, and the only cure is the emotive this type shit i felt that there might be a tiny bit of meaning and you hold on to that tiny little spark in the void you curl around it and feel its warmth and then you die and that's okay because at least you felt its warmth which proved that you were here shout out and joe my goat thoughts thoughts my goodness chat this was a crazy epilogue we didn't get to see him kiss <laughs> I just wanted to see him kiss, man. But then female Shiki wasn't even in the episode. We got a new Shiki, bro. Like, man. The, the unperceived Shiki. The unperceived Shiki. But this unperceived Shiki was fine to be perceived by Mikia, which gives a little bit of hope. Which gives a little bit of something, right? Because it did something other than look into nothingness and aspire for nothingness it, it it worked in it went into the outside world willingly with its will and took action and so that to me is if the origin if the spiral itself as shiki can find reason to interact and take action and feel just the tiniest bit of meaning then that means in the core of existence itself there is that tiniest chance of meaning and that beats nihilism and so i love that that's a big win that's a massive win um holy crap this was a crazy episode i really like that as an ending point but i'm trying to see if there's more stuff to talk about because there, there is you know what i mean like this type stuff that's the personality uh, that was the personality that the personality was housed inside one's mind but that was just pure intelligence not the human mind for example you the person you the personality you the soul what shapes you in all of those forms <sighs> who what is yourself bro if there is a self i don't freaking know that's the th like i just introspection can destroy <laughs> introspection can destroy bro because if you shine a light into yourself and then there's nothing in there but nothingness nothing in there but nothingness crazy if there's just the void right you shine your the flashlight into your own being and you expect to see the soul you expect to see the heart you expect to see ambition desire love laughing hate pain you go and then it's just dark what do you do so like introspection can destroy you if your introspection leads you to destruction right it's not like a net good type thing and so this type thinking of you, the person, you, the personality, you, the soul, if I try to like separate myself into my soul, my personality, my person, if I try to analyze myself, break myself down, categorize me, A, I think it's necessarily a bankrupt organ like operation because the idea of the person, the idea of the personality, the idea of the soul, those separate categorizations are things that were constructed by you and was probably given to you through language and how other people have talked to you about these things. So like, you're already interacting in a field like you are built up and then you understand these things through through intelligence right intelligence was a big thing here that they're born out of intelligence through language through all that and so if you up here try to look in deeper down here of whence you came of your being or whatever then 
what if it just topples everything? Like you're like you're on a different level. So like to go back down here, how do you even do that? How do you dig back down, bro? Because I think you're just necessarily trapped on that level to some degree. And you're like, it's like, well, I guess I'm kind of, am I advocating for a you'll never know yourself position? I'm literally getting like spinning a little bit, bro. I just got like nauseous for a second and like I got like a glimmer of vertigo, man. Oh my goodness. I'm tumbling into myself, into the hole inside my own brain. Ah! We're fine, chat. Don't worry. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's that type of thinking that just spirals, bro. Sp Dude, it spirals. That's why it's called the spiral. My goodness. Yeah. So I this was a great one. This this I would put on the same level, I think, as 7 and 5. I think 5 is still my favorite out of all of these. But I would say that Epilogue is on the same level as 7 and 5. Because I think those were like a above. So shout out shout out this Epilogue. This Epilogue cooked. No wonder y'all were like, um, you didn't drop this, right? No, I didn't drop it. I'm, I'm here, baby. Don't you worry. Sorry it took me, sorry it took me so long. My goodness. Um, yeah, this was wonderful. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. This is a super, 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 super rich show. Um, and it's quite frankly amazing, bewildering, insane to see ideas like this shown through an anime movie. Because I don't, like this stuff to me is like another part of my life. And so to see it, and, and it's been throughout this entire series, Garden of Sinners. But to see it, like, so many of these ideas so precisely and interestingly tackled through the form of anime boys and girls is crazy. And it's it's pretty lit. I'm, I'm here for it. I really, I am here for it. Um, And they do it in such a, like, like, the long gaps and the music. I kept hearing this, like... Like, these other, like... Because there was, like, the piano and the bells playing, but I kept hearing this, like other stuff it it sounds like something like scratching at the back a little bit I wonder if I can find it it's just like that the howl of the wind yeah it's just freaking me out but yeah it really did the music choice the beautiful like, I really liked the backdrop the the really long animation shots that were really interesting and like detailed and zooming in and out and flying around right i mean they did a really good job of keeping what was literally 30 minutes of talking in the same location with the same characters interesting they kept it interesting visually and and like musically which i thought was really cool I, like i kept i was just locked in and it's it's hard to make someone lock in for 30 minutes on dialogue alone so that was uh, honestly quite a feat, right? Reminds me of literally monogatari. <laughs> or this felt kind of a little monogatari to me, you know, where it's just like they're just talking, but like I am entranced, right? Shout out monogatari. Shout out the monogatari reaction series as well. But yeah, um, yeah. So I really like the. I just yeah. This was great. This was great. Um, let me know what y'all think of this. Of um, what I've been yapping about, about what these characters have been yapping about. Let me know if they're, what those other two shows are, or, like, the two things that come afterwards. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments. I'll hook you guys up if y'all are hungry enough, you know what I mean? But, that is all I really got for this one. The epilogue of Garden of Sinners. Um, goaded. Absolutely goaded. It was kind of a, I, it was, like, unexpectedly really good, you know? I would say it was unexpectedly really good. Um, very like philosophical. It was, it's probably the most philosophical show I've seen. At least, like, it was very directly philosophical and it, like, went there. And it goes into the deep chunks, right? Where you really gotta follow them and their language and the way they're using it and the intertwining and the metaphors, right? And so I really, I really enjoyed that. But until then, until the next episode, whatever comes next, whatever series comes next, whatever you watch next, that's all I got for tonight. I will be seeing you then. Peace.